This is Grumpy SEO Guy, episode 12, why there are so many misconceptions in the SEO industry and why the SEO industry wants you to believe them. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy, and I'm sharing with you the strategies that have helped me successfully run my SEO agency for the last 14 years. In this podcast, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience, discussing tips and strategies, and trying to help you cut through the confusion that permeates this industry. If you listen to this podcast, you will know more about SEO than 99% of people on the planet. Ready? Let's get started. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy. Let me tell you why I'm grumpy today. I'm grumpy today because as you know, there are so many misconceptions in the SEO industry, but that's not why I'm grumpy today. I'm grumpy today because the SEO industry itself perpetuates and encourages these misconceptions. Today, I'm going to explain why. But before we do that, my lawyer tells me that I have to say this right now. A quick disclaimer before we get started, everything I say here is based on my experience and opinion from 14 years in the industry. I don't officially know how Google or any other search engines work. Everything I say here is hypothetical and based on my experience. This podcast does not constitute advice or services. What worked for me may or may not work for you. Okay, back to the show. Okay, I just want to give a little appreciation before we go any further. So I was checking the statistics for this podcast, and I have some listeners in Belgium, and that's super awesome because look... This is the first podcast I've ever made. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along. I've gotten some great recommendations from some people too. And I wasn't even really expecting anyone to listen, but I have an international audience and that's awesome. So when I say international, I mean, I'm located in America. So international being another country besides America. So to my listeners in Belgium, I just want to say bedankt and danke and merci. And thank you. And of course, thank you to all my listeners. I'm very grateful that people actually listen to this podcast. And I also like getting the email. So, you know, thanks. Thanks to everybody. Okay, now we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about before. To start, I want you to ask yourself, what is the purpose of a search engine? Now, you might think, well, it's to help people find the websites with the information or the products for sale or whatever it is they're looking for. No, that's not the purpose of a search engine. The purpose of a search engine is to make money. So you need to consider that for the rest of this episode. Now, the most common misconception, as you know, is content is king. We all know content is not king. We all know that content matters very little in the grand scheme of things when it comes to ranking websites. However, it is in the search engine's best interest to tell everyone that content is king. Now, I'm gonna give a little example, and I'm gonna say Google in this example, but this can apply to other search engines too. I'm just using Google because this is the most frequent example. So. This is how Google makes money. Well, let's take a step back. Google makes money from a lot of things. This is how Google makes money from search engines to the best of my knowledge, okay? Let's say you need to find something. You're curious, you wanna research something. So you go online, you go to Google and you type it in and then you get some results. You click on a result. Maybe it's what you're looking for. Maybe it's not. You click back, you click on the next one. Okay, that's cool. You got the solution to your problem. Everything is good. Okay, so. A little bit later, you decide to Google something else because you have another question and you get an answer. Okay, it's good. Now, because Google delivered to you good quality results that answered your question, you're going to keep using them, right? I mean, I am. I probably use Google tens of times per day, right? Like I Google stuff all the time. In fact, people Google stuff so much that Google is now a word that means look for something on the internet. Nobody says, oh, go search for that. They say, oh, go Google this. By the way, I'm sure Google is very happy that they've become a household word. Okay, now you need to search for something else. So you go to Google and you type something in and this time you click one of those results at the very top. Now I'm sure most of you know this, but those results at the top are not search results. Those are ads. Okay, so they're at the top right now. Sometimes Google changes the location of them. But for now, they're at the top. So we're gonna say they're at the top. Now, I just wanna be absolutely clear about this. I'm sure that most of you know this, but I just want to elaborate in case somebody is uncertain about this. Ads 
is completely different from search engine optimization. You cannot give a website authority and have it show up in an ad. You can't do anything except pay money to Google for your website to appear in an ad. And depending on the keyword, there's different costs. It's a whole other thing. There's something called cost per click. More competitive keywords have a more expensive price. You pay a certain amount every time somebody clicks on your ad. I'm sure most of you have heard this, but I wanted to clarify it just in case. So anyways, back to our example. You search for some stuff. You found the answers you're looking for. Okay, you do it again, and this time you click an ad. Google just made money. It is in Google's best interest to deliver to you high quality results so you keep using their search engine and sometimes click on an ad which makes Google money. Again, Google makes money from multiple ventures, okay? But I'm just saying this is how they make money with search. They don't make money when you click on a normal search result, the ones below the ad, which are called organic search results. Google doesn't make any money when you click on those, but they do make money when you click on an ad. So anyway, Every once in a while, people click on ads. Okay, now we're clear on how search engines make money. Now, there might be other ways they make money, but ads is the main way they make money from search. Okay, it is in their, I'm, and I'm gonna say this again, it is in their best interest to give you good quality results so that you keep using them. And so then if you ever click on an ad, they make money. If they give you terrible results, if you never found what you were looking for ever, anytime you Googled anything, you would stop using Google. If you stopped using Google, you would stop clicking on ads. If you stopped clicking on ads, they would stop making money, okay? It's in their best interest to give you the best results. Now, does Google give you the best results out of all the search engines? This is a topic for another episode, but for now, you understand the concept, probably. Remember, it's in the search engine's best interest to give you quality results so you keep using them. Okay. Now, what if the word got out that it was very easy to manipulate search engine results? And I have to clarify here, all SEO is manipulation, okay? I don't care if you're doing white hat SEO. I don't care if you're doing black hat SEO. All SEO is manipulation. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, some people divide SEO into different categories. You have what's called white hat SEO and you have what's called black hat SEO. White hat means following the guidelines set forth by the search engines. Black hat means ignoring the guidelines. There's, it, it's slightly, it may not be quite that simple, but for now that's a sufficient definition. Look. My agency doesn't do black hat SEO and I'm not gonna teach you black hat SEO. So if you came here hoping to learn some black hat SEO, you're probably in the wrong place. Anyways, all search engine optimization is manipulation. I don't care if you're doing the most absolute white hat, changing your title tags and your H1 header tags. And, and I don't care because you know what? That's still manipulation because why are you doing it? You're doing it to make your website more favorable in the search engine's consideration. What, what's that you say? That's right, that is manipulation. Anyways, if you don't like the word manipulation, let's use the word influence, okay? All search engine optimization is done to influence the results, okay? Now, if word got out that content is not king and authority is king, well, do you think that might make people lose faith in the search engines? I think it would. I mean, think about it. Do the search engines really want people to say, oh yeah, you know what? You could, sure, you could look it up on that search engine, but didn't you know their, their, their websites can be manipulated? Yeah, I think that would make the search engines look really bad. So it's in their best interest that nobody knows this. By the way, real SEO agencies know this, but it's in the search engine's best interest to keep people thinking that content is king and that the search engines deliver good results. Now, do they deliver good results? Yeah, quite often they do. Sometimes they don't, sometimes you get some terrible results, but you know what? Generally speaking, it's usually pretty okay. So on the topic, of misconceptions. 
just today, I was watching a video on YouTube and there was an ad before the video and it was for, I don't wanna name the company, but it was one of those companies that helps you easily build a website, okay? And it said something, I don't remember exactly, but it said something along the lines of like, we make SEO easy or easy SEO or something along those lines. First of all, I guarantee you that your easy web building company that you're paying, I don't know how much they cost, let's say 10 or 20 bucks a month. I, I actually don't know. And I don't feel like looking it up right now. I can't imagine it would be more than 10 or $20 per month. So your easy web building company that you're paying 10 or $20 a month to, I guarantee you they're not giving you any worthwhile SEO. What they're probably doing is something similar to the WordPress plugins that we've talked about before. They probably make sure your title tags are good. They probably make sure your header tags are good, you know, but that's not really SEO. That's just having your page the way it's supposed to be. Nobody is going to get to the first three positions or probably even the first page of any search engine just by having good header tags and good title tags, unless somehow they have a portfolio of authoritative websites that they're using to build backlinks with your keywords as the anchor text distributed properly, they're not making SEO easy. And if they do, I guarantee you it's not 10 or $20 a month, okay? But they are propagating the myth of content is king. SEO is easy. You can't manipulate rankings. Everything is good and easy and we help you do it. Maybe that last one's a little bit of a stretch. I don't know that they're necessarily promoting content as king myths, but they're definitely promoting on-page SEO matters myths because uh, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Do you want an example? I feel like some people maybe are just listening to this for the first time right now. So rather than saying, go back and listen to episode one, cause I explain everything in episode one, I'm gonna tell you, Here's a fun little experiment you can do that will conclusively confirm that content on page does not matter. And I'm gonna do this right now. So for this next part, I'm gonna give you an example of a case where content does not matter whatsoever. And before I can do that, I have to give you this disclaimer. What I'm telling you right now is true as of the day that I'm recording this podcast. I can't guarantee you that it will be true tomorrow. I can't guarantee you that it will be true in a year, but for right now, it's true. Anyway, once I give you this example, I'm going to give you another very famous example of a time when content does not matter. And that example, while it was valid for years is no longer in the search results. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that's the case. But first, let's do this example. I want you to open a browser and I want you to go to Google and I want you to do a search for the phrase, click here. Now, remember, I'm gonna do it with you right now as I'm recording this episode. I want you to scroll down and I want you to find a result. It should be it should be seven or eight or nine or thereabouts. It's called How Google Uses Cookies, Privacy and Terms. And I want you to click on that. Now, when that page loads, I want you to do a search in your browser for the phrase, click here. You will notice that the phrase click here does not appear on that web page anywhere. Okay. Again, this might not be the case by the time you listen to this, but I feel like it will. It'll probably be there for a while. So anyways, why is this important? Why does it matter that the phrase click here does not appear on this webpage? The reason is this. We did a search for the phrase click here. According to how the search engines are supposed to work, and remember, content is supposed to be king, we should get some results that involve the phrase click here. And yes, some of the results do, but this first page result that we just looked at does not have the phrase click here anywhere in it, yet it's ranking for the term click here. Think about that. That is proof that content does not matter when it comes to ranking. So you're probably wondering, well, why is it ranking for a term that doesn't appear on it? That's a great question. If you remember earlier in other episodes, we talked about anchor text. 
Anchor text is the reason this web page ranks for the phrase click here, even though the phrase click here does not appear anywhere on the page. So in case you're wondering, the answer is yes, you can rank any web page you want for any keywords, even if those keywords do not appear on the web page. Anyways, now that you have an example of this, I want to give you a very famous example that is no longer the case. Years ago, and for years, by the way, this, this has been the case since as long as I can remember. I'm not sure when it started. I would say at least eight or 10 years ago, if not longer. You could search for the phrase, click here. And the number one result was adobe.com. And I'm pretty sure the web page that was actually uh, in the SERPs was to download um, Adobe Reader. So, okay, who cares? Why is this important? The phrase click here did not appear anywhere on that web page, but it was the number one result for the phrase click here. Do you want to know the reason? The reason was because many people linked to the download page for Adobe Reader using the anchor text click here. The algorithm saw this and said, wow, this page must be very relevant for the phrase click here and put it at the top of the search engine results. Now, I'm pretty sure the reason it's not at the top of the search engine results anymore is because it was such a famous example that I think the search engines probably manually removed it. I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm saying if my goal was to have everybody believe that content is king and there was a very popular example demonstrating conclusively that content is not king, I would probably manually remove it from the results because that would fit the narrative that content is king. And let's also think about it. Adobe.com, super authoritative. I mean, they're a big company. They've been around for a long time. They're very popular. Look at how much software they make. Look at how many people use Adobe software. Very, very authoritative website. Is it any surprise to you whatsoever that an authoritative website ranks for a term that appears very often in its anchor text, meaning websites linking to it, but not anywhere on the page. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know how search engine optimization works and that should not surprise you. Now, does content help? Yes, but not how you think it helps. Content helps like this. The search engines categorize your websites into different categories, okay? Let's say you have a website about blue widgets, okay? Your website talks about blue widgets, it says blue widgets, blah, 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 whatever, okay? Your website, because it talks about blue widgets, is now categorized as a website that concerns blue widgets. So the thing I'm gonna tell you next is as much as you need to understand about how the algorithm works today. If you go online and you search for blue widgets, the search engines will look through their categories of all the websites that are relevant for blue widgets. And this website that we just talked about is because it mentions blue widgets. Then it will rank them in order of descending authority. So of all of the blue widgets websites, the highest authority one is first, the second highest authority one is second, and so on. Now, that's not exact, but it's close enough that you'll understand how to rank a website if you get what I just said. Now, there's one other thing that can put you in a category besides having content on your site, and that is anchor text, which we've also talked about in a different episode. Anchor text is the words that are the link. So if I link from my website to your website and the link says blue widgets, like that's actually the link is the words blue widgets, that also gives relevancy to your website for the phrase blue widgets. That is how you can rank a website with the term that doesn't even appear on the website. Now, with that in mind, there's a definite wrong way to do it. You can give yourself an over-optimization penalty if you do it wrong, so don't, don't do it wrong. <laughs> Um, go, go, go listen to my other, look, go listen to my other episodes if you want to learn the right way to do it. But what I just told you is the most significant ranking signal there is. And that is a large part of the strategy that my agency has used to get and keep our clients at the top of the search engines for years. But the search engines don't want you to know this, okay? Because they want everybody to think that content is king. 
Why? Because then people will assume that if content is king, the websites that they get served in their search will be high quality content. We all know that's not always the case. Sometimes content can be very bad. Let me give you an example. I'm trying to follow a rule on this podcast. And the rule is, I only name companies that are good and helpful, and I don't name companies that are bad. So I'm not going to name this website, but I'm going to try and describe this to you without naming them, of course. A little bit ago, I was I had a problem and I went online and I searched for, I honestly don't remember exactly what I searched for, but it was something along the lines of, well, you know what, let me just tell you. I wanted to know how to take the audio from a video and just save it as an audio file. So for example, you've got like your video file, right? But you don't wanna watch it as a video, you just wanna listen to it as an audio file. And I know that there's a program that will do that, but I didn't know what it was called, I didn't know how to do it. So I went online and I tried to find out how to do it. One of the top results said this. By the way, this website is terrible, but it's extremely high authority and it ranks for pretty much everything. It's not Wikipedia, by the way. Okay. The directions on this website were basically, take your MP4 file, rename it as MP3. Hooray, you're done. You have an audio file now. I'm not even sure where to begin explaining why that's wrong, but it doesn't, no. So like, no, this will not help you. That will not, this will not solve the problem. No, you'll, you're just gonna have an MP4 file that has an MP3 extension and no. So anyways, but it doesn't matter. Was that content king? No, that content was rubbish, but you know what? It was at the top of the search engines because the website has tons of authority. Content is not king. Anyway, it's in the search engine's best interest to not let people know that content is not king. So the search engines promote this myth and the SEO gurus that you may or may not know the names of promote this myth. And if you look at all of the the high ranking, how do I rank a website type of blogs, they will all tell you some vert, not all of them, most of them will tell you some version of content is king. It's not, we know this by now. But the search engines don't want anyone to know that. Why? Because if they did, they would say, oh, you can't use that search engine. Their results can be manipulated. Or again, influenced. If you dislike the word manipulated, but check it out. You probably think I'm talking about Google right now, but I'm not. I'm talking about every search engine because every search engine does this. Every search engine can be manipulated. In fact, that's the purpose of SEO, but most people use Google. So people think Google and search engines are synonymous. Eh, you know, they could be, but every search engine has their own algorithm, whatever. The point is you wanna get your website to the top of the search engines. And how are you doing that? You are influencing the rankings. So. I hope this explains it. Now, I wanna answer this question too. Might there ever be a day when content is king? Because let's be absolutely clear, content is not king. But will there ever be a day when content is king? I think the answer might be yes. In that case, SEO agencies will all disappear because there will be no more need for SEO. What will happen is people will need to hire better writers, or it might even be artificial intelligence doing all the writing. I don't know. You know what? There's probably gonna be SEO agencies that manipulate the AI programs. To, you know what? Okay, probably SEO agencies will still exist, honestly. But like, <laughs> I don't know. But look, today, it doesn't work that way. But anyways, listen. Let's talk a little bit more about how the current algorithm works. And I'm being very non-specific here but it's important that you grasp the concept of authority and why it's really the only thing that matters. So what a search engine does right now is it tries to show the most relevant websites for a certain search term. So whatever you search for, the search engines are gonna try and show you the most relevant results, okay? And that relevancy is determined largely by authority. Remember, the search engines look at all of the websites that are relevant to a certain keyword, which they do by looking at what's the on-page content say and what does the anchor text say, and then they rank them from who has the most authority. Okay, 
This is basically what I refer to as a high school popularity algorithm. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. It's generally speaking a pretty good algorithm. It's not perfect, but it's much better than previous algorithms. And I'm going to do an episode on the history of search engine algorithms. So I'm gonna explain why they have to do it this way today. Um, it, it's, it's, not, it's not perfect, but it's better than it used to be. So anyways, the thinking is that the more authority a website has, the more people that are linking to it. And just a quick note here, number of links does not equal authority because every website has its own level of authority and a link from a higher authority website will give you more authority. Anyway, the thinking is that better quality websites will gather more authority and it's generally a good idea to rank more authoritative websites higher because they are probably better. Again, that's not the best way to do it, but it works. Okay, ideally, how would a search engine work? Ideally, it would work like this. It would say, this person is searching for this. We understand perfectly what they're asking for. Here's the website that answers that question. But they can't do that, so they have to use authority as a value for how helpful a website probably is. Okay, let me give you an example of this high school popularity algorithm. I think this will make everything make sense. This is just gonna be a silly example, by the way. Imagine somebody from a university, somebody from an art university has one scholarship or one opening or whatever available at their university. And they go to a high school and they say, hello, we have one, we have one opening available for one art student. Who is your best artist? The way the high school popularity algorithm works is this. They take all the students that have shown an interest in art, okay, that's like all the websites that are categorized into a certain category, and they would send the most popular student to get that scholarship. Now, is that the best artist in the school? Not necessarily. It's the most popular student in the school who happens to do art. Do you see the difference? That's like how a search engine doesn't necessarily return the most relevant website, it returns a relevant website that has the most authority out of all of the relevant websites. Do you understand the difference? The way the search engines have to work to deliver the best results would be this. Hello, we have one scholarship opportunity available. Who is your best artist? And then the high school gives them the best artist. Not the most popular kid who happens to be interested in art, but the best artist. Instead of showing you the most authoritative website from all the websites that are related to a certain term, it should show you the best match website, okay? But the algorithm can't do that yet. So we're kind of stuck doing it this other way. Again, it's not a horrible way to do it. It's just not ideal. That's why sometimes you get horrendous results like websites that tell you to rename your MP4 to an MP3 and that's how you save audio from a video file. Nope. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope this episode is helpful. And if you have any questions, or if there's anything that you want me to talk about on a future episode, you can email me at hello at grumpyseoguy.com. And I'll talk to you later. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. Join us next Wednesday when we talk about things no one told you about running an SEO agency.